the M after that is. Outskirts about to right, be neutralized. Bravo. See what y'all see at Bravo. So I want to start an armor series going over some details that aren't well documented and aren't in really a lot of guides or kind of scattered out there. Things that I think will be useful, uh, especially to people who are just getting started in it. Uh, so let's get going. For this go round, I am just focusing on tank versus tank damage calculations. Uh, we're not talking about IFVs, tank killers or anything, just tank versus tank. Let's get the obvious out of the way. Your tank has a hull. And that hole in the game of squad has hit points. That is your health meter that you see at the bottom of the screen if you're the driver. Uh, I know everyone knows this, and as you take damage, you see that go down. But what's not clear is what does that represent exactly? How many hit points do I have left? Is, is that starting at 100? Is that starting at a million? What is it? Uh, well, for all of the main battle tanks, they have 3,000 hit points. And when that reaches zero, your tank is dead. That's it. So every tank fight is a rush to see who can rack the other first or who can do 3,000 damage first. So it's time to go do damage to that hull. Uh, when we're wanting to calculate damage to the hull, the following base values will be factors. That is the base penetration of the round that you shoot at it, the base damage of the round, and the armor thickness where you impacted it. After that, you're going to have modifiers that are affecting those things. The modifiers will be the angle of impact, the range of the engagement, and if there's any layered armor involved. Those six items are what comes into play, from what I can tell, for virtually all armor damage that's done between tanks. I highly recommend you check this tool out, squadarmor.com. Um, all credit in the world to MJH1606 for creating this. We're going to use it a lot here, but big props to him. Big thanks for making this tool for us. Uh, keep at it, man. We love it. So let's do a quick example here. We've got an Abrams. We're going to put a round right into it, and this this will touch on several things. Uh, let's say we're point blank on this Abrams, and we, we send an AP round straight at it. Uh, so the base penetration for an AP round this close is going to be 800 millimeters. That's going to be its uh, maximum uh, penetration that it's capable of. We're shooting right here at the 500 millimeter thick armor. And uh, the base damage of this round going in at this range is going to be 800 damage. Now, already, there's a few things coming into play here. First of all, the angle of impact. So the front end of this Abrams is angled. As you can kind of see, it's, it's, it's a steep angle down. And so the way the game takes uh, that into account is it will add to the armor. If you notice here as I'm hovering on this, it goes, uh, even though it's 500 millimeter of armor, you look down at the whole thickness and it says it's 631. That, that extra armor is coming from the angle of impact. It's adding that to it because of the angle. And if we make it a steeper angle, we'll see that it goes all the way up to something like 1200. And we cannot pin that because our penetration is limited to 800 millimeters with this particular round. So it bounces at this angle. If we bring it down, of course, we'll go straight in. Uh, the same would be true up here for the sides of the uh, turret that are heavily armored. They're 600 millimeter thick armor. If this tank is looking right at us, the reason you don't want to shoot that is because those are so thick. No damage is done. It's going to bounce. Even though it's only 600 millimeters, because of the angle of impact, the calculated hole thickness there is 814, which is greater than our 800 millimeter penetration is capable of, of clearing. So angle of impact, very important, as you probably know. Uh, next thing is going to be range. As we move this range out, uh, this fantastic tool will tell you where your penetration drops, and, and you'll also be able to see how much the damage drops when you pin. We were doing 800. Now that we're out at uh, 400 meters, though, or let's go even further, let's say 750 meters, now we're only doing 683 instead of the 800. The range is reducing both the penetration we're capable of and the damage that will be done from the AP round. So I've got to throw this special warning in here. The T62 is a special, special case. Uh, we're going to see why it's the worst tank in the game. Uh, not only because it's old, but mostly because of this. The penetration value on the T62 AP, as you can see, is significantly lower. 550 is its, if you were point blank, is its uh, penetration, maximum penetration it's got. It is so much lower, and, and it does fall off, fall off over range, just like the others do. So right out of the gate, 
there's about what is that about a 30 percent penalty um in terms of how much worse it is uh not only do you have weaker armor but there are far fewer spots where you can penetrate uh on those the other enemy tanks uh so shots that you could be making on others uh you will not be making with this one so for example if i try and shoot right here straight center of the hole point blank i cannot pin that with the t62 so watch out it is different uh it is not i am not referring to that when we're talking about these other penetration values we're talking about all of the other tanks all of the other tanks shoot the standard tank ap round t62 is a special case so here we go we've got a t72 lining up in abrams got a nice clean side shot on it uh, so he's, his armor is not facing directly, directly at us. We're shooting into the side of it here. So let's put this Abrams out of its misery. We're not worried about going for ammo rack here. We're just trying to kill it with penetration shots to see how many shots it takes us to do this. All right, we got it burning, but it's still up and fighting. Uh, we'll get the kill shot on it here. Five shots, and the job is done. So now we're going to go to the other side and take a look. It's the same engagement, 300 meters away, and we're going to see how things look from the Abrams side. All right, looking at it from the Abrams side, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to be putting some penetration shots in here. We're not going for ammo rack. Let's see what it takes to kill this T-72 at the same range. We know it's got the exact same hit points as us. We're using the same AP rounds, so it should take the same five shots to deal with him right and yet the t72 with that strong frontal armor facing us is dead in only four shots why would that be so in our engagement we're at roughly 300 meters uh, when we were shooting at that t72 which died in four hits we're pinning it through the front. I'm looking at the Abrams here, but it's still going to be roughly the same because it's the same AP round. 764 damage is what we're doing per shot. This leads into the last modifier, which is layered armor. If we turn this Abrams over on the side, instead of shooting through the 500 millimeter armor in the front here, if instead we decide to shoot through the side like I was just doing, well, here I'm penetrating it where there's a 100 millimeter layer armor and the 30 millimeter tracks and the 90 millimeter base armor underneath. Now, all of that is less than, way less than 500 millimeters of armor, but because the, it is layered, anything with an underscore over here, the underscore tracks, the underscore layer, those things reduce damage. And this is a big misconception that I see out on some of the forums. Some people will say, that whenever a round penetrates, the full damage is applied, and that can be true depending on where you shoot it. But when you shoot it through anything that's layered or tracks, you do not get the full damage. And in this case, we're shooting it there. We're only getting 714 damage per shot. That changes it from a four-shot engagement to a five-shot engagement. You would lose that if you were in the T-72 making those shots into the side. Now, of course, you'd probably be going for ammo rack or something else, but this is something to keep in mind. If you're shooting somewhere that's layered, depending on your range, it could change it from a four-shot kill to a five-shot kill. Some people will be quick to point out that heat can do more damage than AP uh, at further distances, and that is true. Uh, but, boy, there's a lot of things to be careful of before you decide to switch over and try that. At 500 meters, yes, technically, you're going to get a little more damage from those 125 millimeter heat rounds. Um, but the, the penetration that you're losing, the 215 millimeters of penetration you're, you're losing, are a huge trade-off. And there, there's no point in giving that up for that tiny bit of extra damage. So stay with AP. Um, and also, to point out, this is, this is 125 millimeter heat we're talking about. Only the Abrams, T-72, T-90, and ZTZ use this for the other ones uh, that shoot 120 or, or even less, 115. Uh, I think that's like your, your, your Challenger, your Leo, I believe they're all 120. Uh, I think the M60 is 120. Those 
have even lower penetration values. So, but I'm not even touching on those. We're just focused on the Abrams and, and T, T72 and such here, the 125 millimeter stuff. When you get out to 100, or I'm sorry, when you get out to 1.5 kilometers, it starts to make a lot more sense. Now you're talking about um, getting an additional almost 200 damage per shot at the cost of 83 pin. Now that's that's an interesting trade-off. From that point forward, from about one and a half kilometers out, that's my general rule of thumb. I think it makes a little more sense to consider using heat. So it's up to you, just be careful with it. You don't want to be bouncing if you can avoid it. When I switch from AP to heat here, you'll see the difference in the reticle. You have to lead it quite a bit more, uh, aim quite a bit higher to, to arc it out there so it takes a different path. Might be harder to, to precisely target uh, certain sections of the tank at that range. So just be aware it is going to be more difficult uh, to use at those ranges because of that. So that may also discourage you uh, away from using it entirely. All right, let's talk about reload speed. On your mark, get set, go. So we've got a T-72 versus an Abrams. Compare how quickly they can reload and get those next shots out. As you can see, the Abrams is very much ahead on this. It has a significantly faster reload. How much faster can it kill that T-72? It killed it 4.7 seconds faster. Uh, so yeah, that is a significant advantage. In fact, it's such a big deal that you could sit here and line up the tanks by their reload speed and say, this is who will win. All things being equal. If everyone's pinning, they start shooting at the same time, they're reloading as fast as they can, this is the order in which the tanks would win. This is why, in my opinion, Abrams is the best tank in the game. Uh, this reload speed, when it comes to, we're talking about time to kill, that is a massive advantage. Whether you're talking about rack shots, whether you're talking about uh, just killing them through 3,000 damage outright, either way, that's huge. Uh, it's going to run away. If you let it, and if, if it gets the first shot on top of that, you're, you're double screwed because you can't catch up given how fast the reload is. Uh, massive advantage to the Abrams. Reload speed is huge, plays a massive factor in time to kill. Keep that in mind if you're uh, going up against a tank that's got a better reload speed than you and you get hit first, you need to be immediately thinking about getting out of that fight because it is highly unlikely you're going to outrun them in the damage fight. All right, so Charlie, so the tank was the best. Mosque, there's a tank on East Mosque, Mosque, they're saying. Th throw a mark approximately for me, please. My gunner's looking. Tank fights are all about time to kill. In this case, we've taken a hit, and we don't even know exactly where he is. And every millisecond that goes by, the TTK is getting more and more in his favor. Uh, so you instantly make the call to back out. Uh, we want to try and reposition in somewhere else and start this fight again. Even though we're down one shot, the big advantage we've got here is we've got the Abrams. Abrams has that great reload speed. We might be able to swing this back in our favor. God dang it. No smoke, eyes. smoke, what was it that came. Seven? Go ahead. Yeah, let's just play it safe. I think they got a shot down. Oh, he's, he's on the main MSR. We think he's near MSR somewhere. Someone called that he's on East Mosque, but I don't know that that's where he is. No, he's coming. He's on us. Never mind. We are. Oh, he's right in front of us. I fucked that up. I'm backing up just to give us a little more time. Even though we hit the dirt on that one, he also bounced, and this puts things in our favor. Uh, in the sense that we've got the reload speed advantage, we're going to be able to get our next shot out quicker than him. I decided to back up a little more to see if I can induce some other issue here and find another hole down for us uh, to help protect our rack. I'm up. Nice, nice, nice. He's hurt. This is good, this is good. And just like that, we've evened up the damage 
And because of our advantage on reload speed as well, this fight is almost even. And in fact, he is now tracked, so things are starting to edge in our favor. He's tracked. We're half racked. So you've got a split second decision to make here. Um, we both trade another two blows, so the damage is pretty even and trending in our favor since we can reload faster than him. We should win the race to 3,000, but we just took a rack shot. So now you gotta decide, do I need to smoke and get out to avoid that second rack shot, or am I gonna stay in under the hopes that he can't make that other shot? Uh, so in this case, I decide to kind of start maneuvering around a little bit, try and make it more difficult for him to hit that rack, get us in motion, because uh, we can win the damage fight if he cannot make that shot. He missed. He missed. He missed. We land our third penetration against him, meaning there's one more hit before he's dead, and he misses his shot against us, so that should be the game. Game. Nice. Game. We did not deserve that. We did not deserve that at all. So that's about as far as I want to go on this video. Um, we've gone kind of in depth into how that damage is calculated and some reload speed, talking about time to kill. Uh, so hopefully there's a few things in there to help a few people out. I want to try and do some other details in another couple of videos later. Just don't want this one to get too long. Uh, but anyway, I uh, hope that was useful to a few people out there, uh, and we'll. See you guys out there. Take care.